Blessed morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Good. I was hoping it would be sunny, but today apparently we get liquid sunshine, which is the trend lately, but it's okay. Um, I have a few announcements. Um, we are still going to Dairy Queen after worship, so for those of you looking forward to that, we're still going. Um, during the offertory today, we're going to um, sing a hymn that's actually in our green hymnal. It's on page 75, Create in Me a Clean Heart, O oh God. Are some of you familiar with that? Create in me a clean heart. So we're going to be doing that during the offering uh, or offertory, and it is on the slide, so you don't have to worry about looking for that. Um, senior Saints will be meeting Wednesday. They're going to a flower store to get flowers. Oh, Mary, you're here. Good. Hi. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. And if anybody has questions, they can talk to you after church. Perfect. Thank you. Um, also, this week on Tuesday, the men's club is hosting a euchre tournament. So if you're interested in playing euchre, um, talk to Gary Orr or show up Tuesday evening. I believe it's 6 or 6.30. Check your bulletins. Um, it's, the time is for sure in there. Um, I do have one other announcement, um, but before I do, is there any other from the congregation? Yes. Page number 75, thank you. In the green hymn, no, page number 75, which I do have it on the slide, but I was glad that you reminded me of that. Thank you, Karen. Karen's awesome. I don't know if you all realize how awesome she is. She just found out about the Create in Me thing about five minutes ago. So, I'm going to owe you a lunch. <laughs> um, um, just one other announcement. Um, we do offer condolences uh, to Diane and Mike, her dad, James Williams, passed away this morning. So we certainly keep Diane in our prayers and our thoughts and our hearts for sure. Um, that being said, now we're going to switch over to a really weird juxtaposition. It's the beginning of the month and we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. So are there any birthdays or anniversaries this month in our congregation right now? Oh, I see some hands going up. Birthdays or anniversaries, is, is it birthday? Birthday. birthday. Um, Mary? Birthday. birthday. Bob? 17th. 17th, birthday. Yes. Birthday. birthday. So all birthdays. Birthday, anniversary. And in the back? Birthday. So we're going to sing, if you would please stand, we're going to sing happy birthday to you, happy anniversary to you, may God richly bless you the whole year through. Congrats on another trip around the sun, everyone. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share that peace. I invite you to please join in singing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. It's in the green hymnal, number 328, and we'll be singing verses 1 through 4.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated.
Thank you, bell choir and praise singers, for your beautiful music today. Um, would the youth please come forward? And we'll have you come up here and stand up here around the baptismal font for me. We'll have you stand up. Because when you're sitting behind the bell tables, people can't see you. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. Good. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good? It's kind of a sleepy day, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah, but it's all right. Um, when you leave church and whatever activities that you're going to do today, where are you going then? You're going to your dad's? Okay. Uh, you're going home? Yeah? Yeah? You're going home too? Are you all going home? Yeah. How do you feel when you go home? Like, what does home feel like to you? Cozy? Cozy? That's good. What else? Do, do you feel safe in your home? Yeah. 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 Um, when it rains and there's a bad thunderstorm or something, it's kind of nice to be at home, right? I like it. I like tornadoes. You like tornadoes? Inside, you like tornadoes? Why do you like tornadoes inside? Like you just like them. Okay, never saw that coming. <laughs> do you have a good basement during a tornado, I hope? Okay, perfect. Okay, yes, you do. Um, how about, have you ever been really upset out in the world somewhere and you just wanted to go home? Yeah, yeah. how come? Uh, because your house is safe. Are there people there who care about you? You turned on your GoPro voice command. Uh -huh. Wow, that's cool. What does it do? Uh, you can tell it to do stuff. You can tell it to do stuff. Very nice. I like it. I like it. Well, we're going to look out at all the nice people out there, and we're going to ask them to raise their hands if they have a place where they feel like they are at home. Okay, we'll do that since we do, right? Are they going to? Oh, yeah, most people. Yeah, a lot of people have a sense of home. It's an important place to be, right? And sometimes for folks, home is not a good place for them where they don't feel safe, so they have hopefully other places where they can go and feel safe and like they belong, right? Yeah. So later on, the grown-ups are going to hear about, you know, Jesus and God having mansions in my dwelling places, right? So they're going to talk about places of home. Well, we, while home can be a physical place, it's also a place where there's people around and those of us around us who love us. And if we can remember that Jesus has a place for us always in this, this world, even though we can't see him, he's with us and gives us a sense of safety and security too, right? Yeah? Yeah, I think so too. Shall we pray? All right. Well, is there anything special we should lift up in prayer today that you can think of right offhand? Uh, your brother? Your, your birthday or your brother? brother? Your brother. Okay. So we're going to pray for your brother today. All right. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for giving us a place to live for people who love us and for people whom we love. We especially lift up all of the brothers and the sisters and the moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and friends and anyone else who we can't think of on our list this day, but we lift them up and ask that you can bless them, bless our youth and bless our church and bless our community and our music program and all the wonderful things that you bring us in this world. In your son's most holy name we pray, amen. Thank you. All right, so we have our Sunday school teachers, I think, ready to, to go. All right, um, Miss Erin, where are we going? Downstairs? Yes. All righty. Thanks, everybody.
Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Acts 7. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read responsively Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be your ears to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my father's strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our second reading is from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that Lord, the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to the 14th chapter of St. John, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. There's something to be said about having a place of home, a sense of home. It's a place to live, hopefully. It's a place where our mail can be sent and people come to visit us. They know where to find us. It may or may not be a place where our things are stored that we use in everyday life. Home is a place where we feel safe, secure, comfortable to be our most authentic and real selves. Billy Graham has a quote about home where he says, my home is in heaven. I'm just traveling through this world. Or Maya Angelou, the ache for home lives in all of us. A safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. There's a reason I feel that um, the scripture passage that we just read, I just read, is read at several funeral and memorial services. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. And I got to tell you, every time I read that at a, at a funeral or a memorial service or I hear it at someone else's or even just read it for everyday stuff, I always picture those gold bricks, which of course I've probably brought from that movie I don't like, follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow. That's just where my head goes. And it's interesting to me, in one sense, um, if the family has chosen this passage for a, a service or if it's one that a person has pre-planned their service ahead of time. And I think, in one sense, it helps us to feel that even though we leave, or when we leave this world, we go on into the next, but we have a place to go and a place to call home so that we don't feel homeless, right? It's, it's kind of a thing. We want to have a place to belong. But I think there's more to this passage than that and why it brings people comfort. For myself, I know when a loved one has passed away, I grieve really hard. And I remember, for instance, when my grandmother passed away, my daughter was in kindergarten. I got a phone call from my mom in the middle of the day Hello, and this is when phones were connected to your house, but they could be cordless maybe, right? <coughs> Hi, Darcy, it's Mom. Of course, I know her voice, but I have bad news. Now, my mom's fought cancer several times, and she's still here with us. But when you hear, I have bad news, you're not quite sure what to do. And all of a sudden, it feels like, like all the sand is going out from underneath you, and the world is whoa. Right? That crashy, icky, stomach-in-the-ground feeling. And I didn't know what was coming, and she said, are you sitting down? Oh. Yes, Mom. Grandma died today. And suddenly, even though I was in my house in Pennsylvania, sitting in that dining room at that little desk where the phone was, I felt homeless. I didn't know where I belonged anymore because, well, for one, this was the first grandma to ever die in my family. My grandpa did when I was 12, but that's different than grandma. And I didn't know what to do because looking back, I realized that my grandma gave me a sense of home. I 
I think that's what we need when we grieve. Or when we're struggling with everyday life stuff. We want that sense of home. You lose your job. Ugh, wow. Suddenly you feel like you're floating off and you can fly off into the universe because you don't, don't know where you belong. Or, or maybe you're moving away from home for the first time and your new place doesn't feel like home yet. Where do you live? I don't know. Where's home? I don't know. The whole time I lived in Pennsylvania, if you asked, and it was like 20, <clears throat> lots of years, if you asked me where home was, I would say Michigan. But you've lived here forever. Yes, I know. My husband was in the Navy. He lived on a ship for a long time. Even though he had an apartment or a place on land that he called home, that ship was home. As dysfunctional and crazy as that was for him at times. He went to war zones, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure how safe war or home felt for him when he was on the boat. But we need that safe place, wherever it might be, that we call home, that makes us feel like we're home. And it can be people that are around us, our loved ones. It can be a building, yes, and maybe the memories and the events that are happening can give us a sense of home. Jesus, when he's addressing those around him, he gives them a sense of home because he knows what's coming. He knows he's going to be leaving the world and he has a very short window to get his messages across to all of the disciples and the people that he ministers to. And he talks about, you know the way to where I'm going, but you can't come. Huh? But we want to go with you. But you can't. But we want to go with you. Because who wouldn't want to be in the presence of Jesus and all the wonderful things that he brings to the world? But indeed, he did have a much bigger task at hand for the sake of the world. I remember times when I've gone to summer camp or new places where we have a, a new grouping of people. And the person who's facilitating the meeting will say something to the effect of, describe yourself in three words. Really? I get three? I talk for a living. And then you, my mind, quick, oh, I got to come up with something that's profound that explains all the craziness that's inside my head that y'all don't get to see, but okay, for one, I'm weird. Although I was corrected last night and told I was just colorful, not weird. I don't know if there's a difference or not. I like people, that's three words, so I'm already over my quota. And I don't know what the third one is because now I'm stuck on the first two. But these questions, they're meant to be icebreakers to, to get small groups to know each other quickly or even an interview or something. And probably teacher people who are out there, you've done it with your students, perhaps. We want to learn about each other in a fairly quick way. And we ask everybody to boil down their most important qualities and characteristics in a few words. But the thing is, those three words that we use, whatever they would be, as close as we could live into those, there's probably times when we falter a little bit from them. Um, if you were to describe yourself as joyful, well, that's appropriate for most times in life, but there are probably days when that person is not joyful. Stuck at a red light for one too many times, right? Hard working. Well, what about the days when you're not hard working and you're working hard at not working at all? So they're just quick words to, to give a sense. But see, here's the thing. When Jesus had to express himself in three words, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
If he had a mic, I'd picture him dropping it. Psh, although that's very expensive. Don't ever do that. He talks about being the way and the truth and the life. On those hard moments when we want to feel home and, and we're lost and everything's weird, we don't know which way to turn. When I got that call from my mom, I didn't know what to do. I sat in the chair and I said, Mom, tell me again what you just said. Darcy, Grandma died this morning. It didn't help. I felt more lost. But you know what, Mom? I'm calling Jim right now. And as soon as Tara's done with school, we're on our way. I wanted to go home. I wanted to go home to my mom and my family, my grandma's house, where people cared about me and that I could be with them and see what was going on. And I got to tell you, it very much felt like when I got homesick at camp when I was in fifth grade. Two days I cried straight. Eating my breakfast, a yucky camp oatmeal. It wasn't a Lutheran camp, it was yucky camp oatmeal. Oh, and all the kids were having fun, and I'm just like, I hate it here. It's not run well. I don't like the people, even though my friend's here with me. I want to go home. I miss my dog, I miss my cat, I miss my mom, my dad. I don't miss my sister, but I'll take it. I didn't make it past that hump. Because usually at camp, there's like a two to three day window where it kind of goes, it just kept getting worse. And so I went to the director and I said, I want to go home. So we called mom and mom came. And as soon as I saw her, boom, hug. I remember hugging legs. Mom was 5'10". <laughs> and it was the best feeling ever because I had a sense of home. Well, in Jesus, when he's talking about being the way and the truth and the life, when he says he is the way, he is not mincing words. He means it. And when we feel like we're lost and we don't know which way we're going, we follow him. We rely on him to show us the way when we don't know what that is. And it doesn't have to be a death of a person or a grief thing. It can be whenever we're lost in our lifetime. Follow Jesus. He's the way. He's not lying. And I know that because he says he's the truth. And he's not lied to me ever. And he won't. And he hasn't lied to you either. So when we're lost, we follow him because he's the way. We trust him because he's the truth. And here's the best part. He's also the life. There's ways that he has of bringing people around us to help us see his love, to feel his care, his compassion, his direction. He gives us life. In that trip from Pennsylvania to Michigan, which took forever to get home, I had the chance to reflect on a lot of memories of my grandmother. Growing up when I would spend the night at her house and there was an honor because we had a lot of grandkids and we had to take turns. And so when it's finally your turn, you spend the night at your grandma's and it's great. And if it's summertime, she gives you one of those little imperial butter dishes and lets you go out into the garden and pick the raspberries to put on your cereal. And she gives you that special chair that's right by the toaster on the little fold-out table that you can put your Philadelphia cream cheese on your toast to go with your cereal with those raspberries. And she tells really sarcastic jokes and has a chance of when you're in trouble making you feel like you're this big by giving you the look of the grandma and her giggle. I had time to reflect on those and how my grandma has a sense of home. And I'm sure you all have people who give you a sense of home. Those memories that you have with that person and the ones that you're going to make and the moments now, that is the life in Christ. Because he loves us and because of his love that spreads down through us to share with other people. Yeah, Billy Graham, 
You might say your home is in heaven and you're just traveling through this world, but I would add a piece, even though Billy Graham's pretty awesome. We might be just traveling through this world, but also our home is here because Jesus is with us too. He gave us those words just as he did the disciples because it's not our time to go where he is right now physically. But he promises to never leave us. He promises to be an indwelling in his love and his love in us. That's home. That's home. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, succinctly described in three words, but so much more. Amen. Generous God, we give thanks for the gift of sharing our time, talents, and treasures with your earthly kingdom. In our actions, help us to live as Jesus teaches us, so others may come to see your glory. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel, even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for didactyl ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge building ministry between church and world. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, burdened fields and arid deserts, protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, 
extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt, following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick, especially those in our, on our prayer list and those in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, or are going through transition of any kind. Lead us in your ways. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Rock of Ages Cleft for Me, number 327 in your green hymnal.
Go in peace, serve in love.